about truth. So creation is just a story to help us to be moral. And if creation is not true, then the flood cannot be true. If Adam and Eve were not real people that God made and put in the garden and it's just a story, it's a, it's a fable, it's a myth, then, then there was no creation. Then you can believe it in evolution. And if that is not true, then the flawed story cannot be true. And if the flawed story is not true, then the exodus is not true. They are all myths and stories. And if that's the case, then Jesus' death on the cross and resurrection cannot be true. And if these cannot be true, then the second coming of Jesus also is not true. So all these Bible stories is to help us to be moral and to love one another. So he says, so now his church, the church had done some things in the past that were not right. They were not tolerant. Hear that word. Tolerant to people who were different. So now we accept everybody. We accept everybody. And we are no longer going to condemn anybody. We love everybody. God loves everybody. God has been going through evolution. And the church has been going through evolution to understand the the, 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 uh, to, to have a clear concept of God. For God is love, and he loves everybody, regardless of who and what you are. And he says, and he says, we have not been tolerant, so now we're going to be tolerant with everybody. They have a council preparing to ordain women. And now, tolerance and love is the order of the day. Now I'm thinking about this and I'm saying, oh, see how now things have switched around? So if God loves everybody, God himself has been going through evolution, you know, he's repenting, he's changing. He's come from judgment to love. So he doesn't condemn anybody. He accepts everybody just as they are and just remain who you are. Then the people that are going to be, who are going to be singled out and opposed will be people who do not tolerate everybody and everything. The time is at hand. The time is is at hand. So though they are saying they are tolerant with everybody, they cannot be tolerant with people who are not tolerant. It won't be long. It will not be long. And whatever will happen, will happen. And knowing this, seeing all these things. We, God's children, we ought to begin to practice what we preach. To be holy and righteous and godly. So, Peter said, we, according to his promise, look for what? A new heaven and a new earth Wherein dwelleth what? Righteousness. We, according to this word. Who are the we? Who are the we? Who are the we? We, the people that are living in holy conversation and godliness. The righteous. We, the righteous. God's children. Now, Look for a new heaven and a new earth because this old one will be what? Will be burned. So let scoffers 
scoff the fundamental truths of God's word and deny the promise of the second coming, but we, according to his promise, look for a new heaven and a new earth wherein dwelleth righteousness. Where nothing lives but righteousness. Righteousness and holiness dwells there. Brethren, so this morning, the beginning of the year, what the Lord is telling us is to prepare yourself in righteousness to live in the kingdom of righteousness. And don't just prepare yourself alone, but hasten his coming by leading souls to the kingdom of God. Make a holy resolution that this year you are going to engage in holy conversation and godliness. Holiness and righteousness is what we need to make it through the fire. Prepare to meet your God. It's almost over. No, no postponement. Let's bring this to a close with commitment. Make your own personal holy resolution. Give me a mic. And let's bring this to, to a close with individual holy resolution of eternal importance. What's your holy resolution? I'm not talking about the other resolution we make and break. But holy resolution. What's your personal holy resolution? Make it in your mind. And tell it to God. And ask him to give you power to keep it. Amen. We're going to bring this to a close. We're going to sing our, our hymn, our closing hymn, and then we will bring this to a close with prayer.